Okay, this is for the 2702V um, receiver gyro and the Walkera 2801 Pro uh, set up for the endpoints for the 2702V. Uh, this is part B to the transmitter setup. First thing you want to do is bind up the helicopter. So you plug the battery in, turn on the transmitter. Okay, so we're bound up. Now, you may want to disconnect the blades, disconnect the motor, um, take, you know, some safety precautions before you get into this. Uh, the next step is you want to go into throttle hold and then put the uh, stick at half, halfway, 50%, so that the swash is level and the uh, follow arms are level. Um, as far as what to use during setup, there's a little, there's two buttons you got to be concerned with. That's the tail um, set and the SW set. This is an act. The switch is actually the last switch on the end here. And then there's a set button. Now I found if I use one of these, um, uh, I guess they're like a spout on some air compressed air containers. It's better to use that than say a screwdriver or some other sharp piece of uh, plastic. This kind of hits the button flat on and it won't damage it. So when you got your helicopter you should have got one of these screwdrivers either a long one or a short one and this you could just probably have one laying around. Alright so we're in throttle hold we're at half stick uh, the swaps for this part has to be 70, 70, and 70, like we talked about before. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that the switch here, you swing these blades around, is actually on SW set. Okay, so move that over. And the first thing to do is to hold the set button down. You'll see the light start to blink. Now at that point, the squash plate will go to where the 2702V thinks its neutral point is. In other words, it shouldn't move at all. If you've done the mechanical setup right, when that set goes into effect, you should not see or hear the swash plate move. It should just stay right where it is. And that's how you know that you set it up mechanically correct. Um, there's two things that we're going to have to do. We're going to have to teach the receiver the elevator endpoint and the aileron endpoint. So that's what the next step is. You just click to go for um, elevator. You just click the setup button again and you'll see the elevator light is flashing. So it's telling me uh, to go ahead and put the endpoint in for elevator. So I gotta put the camera down for that. And you can watch push the elevator all the way forward until you feel it lock into that little corner there and then hit the set button. release it. At that point the aileron light will light up. Let's see, we can focus on in that. Get the green light, it's blinking. It wants the uh, aileron endpoint to be set up. So we'll do that. Watch the swash plate. <clears throat> I push all the way over to aileron, hit the setup button. Swash plate should jump up and down twice. Do not release the uh, aileron until that's done. There's about five different moves there. That's it. The endpoints are set. The 2702V knows how far to go forward, back, left, and right as far as the swash plate is concerned. Okay? That's about uh, the easiest thing 
that you can set up on a helicopter, I think, these days, but it's good to go over it. Alright, so at this point, we'll put the um, throttle stick all the way down, stay in throttle hold. The next part is the tail setup. A little word about the tail. There's two ways you could set it up. Uh, you could set it up for rate mode to give it a little um, anti-torque rotation, or you can set it up for uh, dead center. Now the manual says to uh, to set it up for center and let the heading hold take care of uh, the gyro take care of the tail. That's the way I'm going to go through this setup right now. I've set it up both ways. Um, I've put about 8 degrees in uh, rate mode and then I went ahead and um, set it up for center. It works either way. But just so you know, the, the way to get it centered is obviously if you turn fold the blades in, there should be no pitch. And you can see that those blades are straight. And that uh, this fork, this outer fork here, should be halfway on the shaft. So from here to here is halfway. Let me show you that again. From here to here is halfway, and from here to here is halfway. And uh, at that point, you know you're halfway in. So for the tail, what you do then is go into tail uh, set, which would be moving this button to switch over. make sure it's all the way clicked over then you hit the set button once again let's see if you can watch the uh, lights change hold it down okay it's changed and it's in rud set mode now little tip is to make sure before you do that the first time that the um, tail servo arm is disconnected it's not a big deal but it could uh, depending on how you have it set up it could um, cause this tail servo to to, um, to bind up but in any case the next step is to get the tail servo arm at 90 degrees okay and as you can see mine is 90 degrees or it's pretty close it's not exact Sometimes you can't get it exact. Um, get that at 90 degrees. Get your tail um, assembly at half, halfway set to where you have no pitch in the blades. And the next step is to go ahead and click the set button. Push it in one time. At that point you'll get a quick double flash and it tell, it, it's telling you that it's ready to be set uh, for the left end point so I'm going to go ahead and do that and um, make sure you guys can see it so I'm just pressing the button over little by little now you wait till you get some feedback alright I'm binding you hear that. So as soon as it binds up, back off. Of course you don't want to jam it in. Uh, you want to just kind of gradually ease it over. At that point I'm at the uh, leftmost endpoint and I'm going to click set and register it into the receiver. Okay. Tail went to uh, center again and I got a double uh, fast blink with the green LED on RUD. So, at this point, it wants me to go into the right and set the right endpoint on the tail. Um, okay, you can see both. So, I'm just going to move the, uh, the uh, throttle, the RUD control to the right, little by little. Wait till I get a little tiny binding. Okay, back it off until it stops. Now, 
pay attention to the tail as I hit the set button. Okay, that's it. The tail endpoints are set. Um, the manual says to move the switch back to SW set as far as to fly the helicopter. You're done. That's it. Uh, you can unplug the receiver, rebind, the helicopter is ready to be flown. Uh, if you go, you'll see these are my endpoints. I'm all the way over. And you can see no binding uh, as far as heading hold. I've got gyros working. And as far as the swash plate, I could look at that. Of course, it's at the center. Let me rebind. Always good to rebind after you do the setup. Okay, throttle hold again. Center stick. Forward, back, left, right. Okay. That's uh, that's pretty much it. Now, the other thing, you know, like I said, for just starting out, back the pit down to about 50. You want to do the setup with 70, 70, 70. But once the setup is done, this is how you adjust the travel uh, as far as the swash plate and as far as aileron and elevator, how far over uh, the swash plate will move and how far up and down it will move. 40, 40, 50 is a good uh, general place to begin. It will get you about plus or minus 9, 10 degrees and uh, a decent cyclic that you can um, at least test with. Throttle curve I do a 0, 90, 90, 90, 90. These are just some beginner settings. Right. Pitch curve, I like to start out with a 50, 58, 68, 78, 100 for testing. This way um, it's nice and easy to fly that first flight. Now, when you get the helicopter, the other thing comes with this datum tool. Uh, this is going to be one more video. This goes, you remove the head button. You put the datum tool on and you put the um, two millimeter fly bar through it. You use a pitch gauge and that's how you can tell how much positive and uh, negative pitch you're getting total. And that's one way to do, you know, check the pitch. Another way is if you go, let's get that centered again, fold the blades back. Um, try and get this so you guys can see it. And basically, you're looking for some flat blades. I think my pitch is close. It looks like it's got to go up a little bit, but it's very close. Uh, that's one way to check. I'm going to go through the actual checking with the datum tool. Uh, this way you guys get a chance to see that. But that's it. This, this helicopter is pretty much ready to fly now. Uh, the receiver set up. Again, you know, hit the set button. Make sure you're either in tail setup or swash plate setup. Um, two movements forward and right and you start out with left and right for the tail and uh, it's pretty straightforward stuff that's a uh, one of those things where once you do it once or twice it uh, 
it becomes very easy to do. You don't need the manual or anything like that. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope this helped you out. Thanks for watching.